So, let us work out your idea. So, let us say in psi x prime p contribute log p x floor times log p. Now, log p x floor times log p equals of course, log x by log p floor times log p. Now, this is uh, log x over log p plus order 1. There can be a it can differ from log x over log p by at most 1. Right? When the in the worst case it will differ by something close to 1. Then psi x equals sum over prime p less than equal to x log x this is equal to pi x log x plus order log of product of prime p less than equal to x ok is that right now what do we do with this quantity the error term how do we estimate that product of all primes less than equal to x hmm? so per one to the x log x then that's it that's <coughs> then that's not very nice see the error term we want to be square root x log square order psi x by log x, which means order x by log x plus something plus the error, which is no, 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 no way you want x by log x. If you look, if you want it constant, it is very easy to show that pi x for example, or psi x is between 1 by 5 x and 5 x. So, you did not have to do any of this uh, you know, Riemann hypothesis and the complex analysis forget all that just do simple counting. One can show with a little bit of cleverness so this is what Shevishev showed long even before well before Riemann that uh, pi x is greater than equal to x by 5 log x and less than equal to 5 x by log x. that is a good point. Let that be an assignment that is show that uh, pi x is x by 5 log x is between x by 5 log x and 5 x by log x and just do simple counting nothing else. Of course, here see we have been very pessimistic in, uh, in uh, approximating the floor here we are all saying that x log x by log p floor is always log x by log p plus order 1. Can bond this by 1, sure, but that is does not help. There are would be times for different p's this will be very close to 0 the error and there would be times when it is closer to 1, but then it is going to be very hard to say how for how many p's is closer to 1, how many p's is closer to 0 unless we do an estimate of that and some clever way of doing that. do not think we can uh, conclude much about this. Okay.
So, this is likely not to where in this approx approximating this you mean, but this already looks pretty high. In fact, if you forget order log p here, if this was just order 1, then what do you get? Pi x log x plus order pi x and that is already too much, because what we are looking for is a much tighter relationship. So, if psi x is x plus order square root x log square x, then uh, I want pi x to be also the error term to be also close to square root x. In fact, yeah, now it is I think this has to fail, because see this floor unless it is exactly, no not necessarily it has to fail that is not right, but it is much more likely to fail, because even if the log x has a slight it differs slightly from a multiple of log p, then the error would be at least 1 over log p. If error is at least 1 over log p, then multiplication by log p will only it will give you error order 1 for 1 prime and then when you sum up you get order pi x here and then that is too much. So, we have to do something else and uh, I tried something last time which clearly was wrong because it we cannot differentiate the error and I promise that I will find out ab about it today and do it, but I had no time in the morning to find out. So, I am in the same position I was yesterday evening, but we can still try let us uh, see the pro uh, uh, issue last time was that the error uh, we had approximated certain error and we said okay, psi x if you plug this in and differentiate then we get this, but we cannot differentiate the error. So, let us go a step back and before arriving at that error we had some expression for psi x which we and that error part we then we do an approximation and got an error. So, instead of doing an approximation for the error let us go back to the original expression for psi x differentiate it there, because there, there was an exact equality and then do a approximation, maybe that will help. Okay. So, if let me rejig your memory, what was exactly psi x? No, no, that is that is one thing, but psi x right in the beginning we derived a expression for psi x which was something like is uh, c minus i r to c plus i r and of course, 1 over 2 pi i here. Then we had minus zeta prime z over zeta z x to the z by z d z plus an error term. What was that error term? And now, I am not saying that get an approximation of that of something like uh, I think uh, that was like x by r log numerator. No, so I do not want this, because this I cannot differentiate. I want that expression, which we we approximated to get this log square x, x log square x by r. <coughs> there was some infinite sum, if I remember correctly. Summation over? Yeah. Okay.
log and the summation goes from n greater than 0. This was the exact term. So, this is what we work with then. Order of the whole sum. Why order of the whole sum? What, what approximation got us the order? No, go back. Why, why, why order? Huh? Because delta is also approximate. approximate. Okay, so let's go back further. Let's. What was the delta's business? So there was an approximation there too. Yes. No, no, no. But see, delta we said that it was like from c minus i infinity to c plus i infinity that integral of x to the z by z is precisely the delta, but when you truncate that integral at from you just look at it from c minus i r to c plus i r, then you get an approximation of delta and that approximate that truncation error is what we were trying to we did estimate if I remember correctly. In fact, we did estimate see the how did we calculate this, uh, pro, uh, this definition of delta that was by looking at this rectangle, two rectangles, right? One c minus i r to c plus i r, then going to positive side and once going to the negative side, and then we said that if you evaluate this integrals on the three sides, or three edges, it tends towards zero. But now, one side of rectangle we can send towards zero that. Uh, this these arms which go from c minus i r to u minus i r that u can go to infinity, but i r stays there. So, integral along these two branches one the vertical one and two horizontal ones, vertical ones is what I want the horizontal one is the error and the horizontal one stays the error stays. So, what is that integral value? Actually, we, we can just write it as maybe just as integral. You see, let's maybe it's it's maybe a good idea to revisit the whole thing and just write it as integral. So, first of all, just answer me the question: Is this exact apart from the problem in the, the approximation in delta? is this part that you get, is this exact, there is no approximation involved here except for the delta function one, which is like c plus i r to So, these are the two integrals which are the error terms for delta approximation. Actually, this integral is c plus i r to infinity plus i r. So, it is going on the right hand side. Depending on x, whether it is less than 1 or greater than 1, actually there will be an integral going to the left hand side also. But is not that already here? This is what I am confused about. In this sum, is this not already incorporated? Sorry? We approximated this integral to get this order. Let us just start from the basics. Zeta prime over zeta is a summation n greater than or equal to 1 lambda n by n to the z, right. And uh, moreover, we also know that psi x equals summation n less than equal to x lambda n, which we said is summation n greater than equal to 1 lambda n 
delta x by n, right? If I remember correctly, and delta x by n is one over two pi i integral c minus i r to c plus i r plus infinity plus i r to c plus i r to infinity plus i r plus infinity plus i r to c minus i r infinity minus i r x to the z by z d z. So, that is delta z fine. So, we get therefore, 1 over 2 pi i this is x by z divided by n by n by n to the z. And this should be minus. So, that is a good part and then yes, these integrals are what giving me that approximation. So, this is exact. So, this is the error part which are these two integrals. Now, after that we focus on this part and we derived an expression for this as well. What was that? That was in terms of the zeros, the residues in that big rectangle and that came out to be I think x minus zeta prime 0 or times zeta 0 minus or plus I do not now remember whatever it is. Then uh, there was another minus of log of 1 minus x squared, these are all trivial zeros. And then there was a plus over rho x to the rho by rho, rows are the trivial non trivial zeros and this is it, that is the expression for the integral. I am not sure about the signs here and maybe not not sure about this one also is it, this probably it, but these are this is not important anyway, these are this is a very tiny small number in any case ok. Plus this error. Fine. Now, this is exact, no approximations anyway. Now, let us differentiate psi, so psi x or psi t whatever it is. So, it's, then what is uh, d psi x by d x? 1, this vanishes, what happens to this? This is uh, like 2 x upon 1 minus x square. What happens to this? It's the row minus one. And what happens to this?
x to the z by z okay now what is the approximation what is the error so error is this whole thing it is 1 plus the error so what is the error 2 x by 1 minus x squared yes yes this one yeah Oh, is 1 over x square? Okay. So, then this will differential will change. Differential of this would be 2 pi x cubed by 1 then 1 over x square, right. which is same as saying that you just multiply whole thing by x cube, then you get 2 over x cube minus x. Now, 2 over x cube minus x it is uh, is bounded, I mean for any sensible value of x, this is order 1. So, this is gone. What about this? x to the rho minus 1. Now, in the, when you can look at the error, you just look at the absolute value. So, which is uh, we just look at x to the real part of rho minus 1. Now, assuming the Riemann hypothesis to be true, this would become x to the minus half hmm. and sum over all rows such that imaginary part of rho is less than equal to r. This we have already estimated. So, this is did not we do some calculations for this? We must have because uh, when we approximated the error here, oh, we did 1 over rho. Take it from me, it is like r log r. We will prove it. It is the number of zeros actually there is a very nice expression we can very precisely define or you know write down the formula for number of zeros of a zeta function at height up to height r. So, it turned out to be order r log r. Okay, so that takes care of this. Now, what remains is this. How do we estimate this? So, z is like uh, whatever that c, it goes c to infinity and c to infinity. Is, so, the imaginary part is really playing the no role is c to infinity uh, both sides right. And when we look at the anyway, anyway the abstract value you get t. So, basically what you get is order c to infinity sum over n greater than equal to 1 lambda n over n to the z. Now, n to the z is also of course, bounded right n to the z is in absolute value it is we get n to the and x to the t minus 1 d t. t is the one that is going from c to infinity, t is the variable parameter that is being integrated on. See this is going the z, right z is integral, but only the real part is varying, the imaginary part is always the fixed and when you take the absolute value the imaginary part anyway goes away. So, it just becomes an integral of this kind. Integral c to infinity lambda n uh, you have x to the t divided by n to the t d t. Well, this is simply integrated as 1 lambda n can be taken out and then you integrate c to infinity
and this would be of course, I have strictly speaking I should have split this sum into two parts n less than equal to x and n greater than x, because depending on whether n is less than equal to x and n greater than x, the definition of delta function itself will change in the sense that this integral I have just say that it is going from c to infinity. The other thing occurs that is n is less than x then this would go from c to minus infinity. If n is bigger than x then it goes from c to infinity. Remember that delta function for n less than x delta n over is, is, is 1 because you are going from the negative side and then there is a pole that you are pulling it in inside the rectangle. If n is bigger than x then you go to the right hand side where there is no pole and then delta value is 0. So, this sum actually this integral should come should I come inside the sum and with these two splits, but in effective the effect of that is going not going to be anything. See you look at this integral. So, here think of n always being bigger than x. Okay because only then this integral will converge otherwise if this goes to in infinity and n is less than x it diverges because and that is fine because whenever n is less than x this integral the limit changes to minus infinity which has the same effect. So, integrating this gives you what uh, same thing x by n to the c actually 1 over log x by n. So, this is more or less the same thing more or less I call me exactly the same expression that we got earlier except that there is something there has to be something missing here. There is an r that is missing. That is funny. What happened to the poor R? Aha, of course, this x to the t minus 1, there is an x here. Okay. So, instead of an R, there is an x, that is the only difference that has happened. So, we can use exactly the same analysis to derive that this is order log square x. x log square x divided by capital R, but now is divided by x, so it is just order log square x. Okay. Oh, because the earlier error which was this is order x log square x by R and this is in this expression the only ch the change now is then instead of this r we have an x and that is it. So, this is up it becomes x log square x by x which is order log square x and hence is 1 plus Now, also remember that we are finally plugging in r to be square root x. When you plug in r to be square root x, we simply get the error to be just order log square x. Okay. You agree with me? Is there any question? Okay, got got to ask now if there is any doubt. Okay, perfect. Now let's come back to the our current analysis and what we had was Uh, 
d psi t by log t integral going from 1 to x so, pi x and let me just stick order pi Now, plug that in 1 plus order for psi prime at t. Now, we know 1 plus order log square t. Okay. Now, we are back to the good situation. This is trivial this error is well I should not say trivial something is wrong you know when you say 1 plus order log square x what does it mean this means nonsense this is much smaller than this error it is completely bizarre yes I see no, we miss many things r is of course we missed but this is also not good we did this estimation and we said this is equal to order r log r by square root x. No, it is completely unacceptable. This does seem to what, what, what does it mean? This will be a 1 over square root x when you take the absolute value and then sum over all that is just a count of all the zeros of zeta function. They have to be r log r. Okay, and then we miss the r again. The, when you differentiate this with respect to x, you lose that. You cancel out that z in the denominator. That's how you lose that r. R log was is also called when R is when R is square root x, the order log log x. That's too bad, too big. Yeah, that's worse. But even this is if you can get rid of that, even this is is one here. In fact, even here I why I should not be writing order one. I should simply be writing something like order one over x cube. Because x is a parameter. Oh, you take the absolute value. So, absolute value of x to the rho minus 1 is a square root x for any rho when the Riemann hypothesis holds. So, that comes out square root x is common, then you just sum over all rows. The number of such rows is, as I said, is less than equal to imaginary part less than equal to r is r log r. Now, so this is of course, this is also wrong whatever I have done is completely wrong. <sighs> okay. So, what what is going to work? Because this seems to be I do not see a how you can improve on this because here just look at this guy you have to take the absolute value when you take a square root x and then r log r is does come out you cannot avoid it the moment it does come out and r is we are always fixing it to be square root x or can we can we play around there probably not because remember other if you play around the value with the value of r then uh, psi x itself is going to change right no but that how does it matter how does it matter that's a very good point 
what is stopping us from choosing a better value of r? Because you see this, this equality holds for all values of r. So, let us choose a value of r which optimizes the error. Okay, but here, okay, here we can say, okay, fine, we can choose the value of r which optimizes the error. But what about here? There is no r here at all. Because r is gone. When you take the absolute value here, r simply goes out. and then you end up with log square x. Okay. Good. Another assignment problem. there is clearly a fix, just that we have not been able to find it. And there is a simple fix, it is not, it's sort of not anything complicated. <laughs> maybe you can. <laughs> well, you cannot disprove Riemann hypothesis, but maybe you can disprove this connection between Riemann hypothesis and prime density. Good. 